He has a giant knife and I have a feeling he's gonna feed me. In this video, oh, right here, right here. I'll attempt to eat nothing but Turkish street food for 24 hours. We are in Istanbul, Turkey, and we're gonna take you on a food tour like you have never seen before. Let's get to it. Istanbul, the only major city that divides two continents, with Europe to the west and Asia to the east. This metropolis of 15 million is a melting pot for all the absolute best street food in the country. So let's get started. This is Simit. It's the most ubiquitous street food in the city. Eat it for a snack or grab one for breakfast. Simit is a chewy, ring-shaped bread covered with sesame seeds. The sesame seeds give it a ton of flavor because they're so toasted. Street bread is great, but I'm looking for something a little more substantial. It is 9 in the morning, we are just starting the day, and we are starting with breakfast. We've come to a very typical Turkish breakfast spot. This is basically the Denny's of Turkey, although way better. Let's go inside and check it out. So this is the kitchen right behind me. There are some orders that are about to go out. If you sneak around here, you can see somebody has ordered some fried bread, some tea, even french fries for breakfast. It's amazing. I'm gonna go inside and figure out what's going on. We are starting with a local fried bread known as pishi. This one is gonna be stuffed with this pastrami and also a little bit of cheese. So he starts with the dough, he flattens it out. He's put some oil on the counter already. He just gets a little rip of pastrami and then some cheese on top too. Close it up like an envelope. Oh, almost like an empanada. Give it a bit of a crimp and that is gonna head off to the oil. Very nice. Welcome to breakfast. It's big, it's heavy. I mean, obviously, all this could feed probably enough for three to four people. Let's do a quick tour of the table. First of all, right here, we have the minimum. We have feta cheese, some cheese, I don't know, and then another cheese, that I don't know. I'm gonna have some bread, and then right here, we have a beautiful tomato paste. Olives for breakfast, mixed salad. This is clotted cream with honey on top. We have pishi. This is a fried bread with cheese and pastrami inside. I'm just gonna rip it right open, and we're gonna see the cheese oozing, melting, and then he put a pretty conservative amount of pastrami me on there. That is the money bite right there. I'm gonna go for it. Oh, delicious. The pastrami is like a little bit dry, super oily. This to me is a very heavy breakfast. I love this, but I don't know. I could eat one half of these. How does a country with people eating this stay productive? It's probably no different than Americans eating donuts, but if I ate this for breakfast, about two hours later, I'd be sleeping in my cubicle under the desk. Next, right here, we have the main course. This is the menemen. If you're looking for a classic Turkish breakfast, go for the menemen. It starts with a combination of tomato paste and green chilies, and soon some eggs. But the toppings here are endless. This morning, I'm going with the spicy sausage. Then they add some eggs and some mozzarella cheese. It's not a soup, it's not an omelet, it's menemen. Take a look at this. You can see the big chunks of sausage. One thing you have to remember, whenever you're in a Muslim country like this, that is not gonna be pork sausage. Let's stop talking, let's try it out. Oh, how do you even categorize that? It is like a very wet omelet. I mean, obviously super tomatoey. There's not really a spice to it. It's not spicy, but you can taste the fresh green chilies inside as well. I'm still trying to figure out if this is a spicy country or not. So far, my instincts tell me not really. So that is just the beginning of our day. We are eating Turkish food for 24 hours, which is not gonna be that hard because we're in Turkey. Let's keep moving. Most of Turkey's borders are surrounded by water, and in those waters, you'll find these. One of the most unique street foods in Istanbul. Mussels, but with a little bit of a twist. 22 years ago, the owner of this establishment started on the street with his little platter, and he was so popular, um, or he got investments, or he went on Shark Tank, and then somehow he pitched them on making a whole restaurant with multiple flavors of mussels, and here we are. All right, let's go inside the kitchen. I didn't actually ask permission. Let's see if they uh, get wise to what I'm doing. so far. Oh, 
Boom. And now I work here. So right here, I've ordered some of the spicy mussels. He puts it in the steamer. Once those are hot, they're going to come right out. All right, just like that. And right now, you can see he opens up each one and he puts it on the plate for us. And you can just eat it right out of the shell like a spoon. They also have some more modern mussel dishes right here. Fried mussels on a stick. I'm going to try that out too. So right here, we have three different courses. And uh, I don't know, if you're a pirate in the 1700s, this is another course you might want to. So we have fried mussels and then two others right here. I want to stick with the fried ones immediately because they're hot and crispy and I don't want them to cool down and get soggy or anything like that. I feel like this is something you would see at the Minnesota State Fair. It's on a stick, it's fried, but with it comes a very unique and interesting sauce. A sauce full of breadcrumbs, garlic, vinegar, salt, and walnuts. Let's try it out. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. That's a delicious sauce. Slightly sour, really thick, very lovely. And these mussels, my gosh, look how crispy this thing is. The way he cooked it is so interesting. He employed a frying technique I've never seen before in my life. The mussels have already been battered, floured. They're on this tray here, getting the oil ready. First, he puts it in the solution here of mineral water and baking soda. He says it's gonna make it even more crispy, but I've never seen anything like that. I wanna try one just alone. Mm. You can really feel the crunchiness, but you can taste the mussel too, and the mussels taste great. So this is a more modern take on mussels, but I'm a real traditionalist. So right here, we have the OG version. To be honest, when I first saw people selling mussels on the street, it freaked me out a little bit because I was looking for ice. I was looking for some way to preserve the mussels because sometimes it can still get hot here. Now that I see inside, I see how it's prepared. It makes a little bit more sense to me. I mean, the rice is in there, the mussels cooked already, and the shell's like a little lunchbox, keeping it fresh. Mussels or Migye Dolma must have a fresh squeeze of lemon before you throw them back. I secretly want him to feed me. Oh, right here, right here. <laughs> Here, a green lemon. In the sunlight, it's glistening. It balances it out a little bit. And I'm talking, let's try this mussel. Oh, so many thoughts and emotions. You can see if I remove the mussel, there is a load of rice in there. Oh, it's like a little taco. So you can see some of the seasonings on there too. The pepper, the cinnamon. When is the last time you had mussels with cinnamon? So this right here is a spicy version of this. The only difference is they put some chili paste on there as well. Give it some lemon and let's try it out. Oh, it's a little bit spicy. It's got a little bit of kick. I respect it. That's gotta be the spiciest thing I've had so far in Turkey. Oh wait, I've been dying to ask this since I was a kid. Do you guys eat turkey? Yeah, for New Year's, uh, you especially. For New Year's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turkey eats turkey. So that is mussels in Turkey. It's a completely different approach to this seafood, one I've never seen before, but it's really fun to try out. We've just entered a Turkish pickle shop here. They pickle everything you can imagine. Let's take a quick tour. These are two different types of chilies. Garlic, they pickle pickles. Here we have carrots. They've got chilies, they've got small pickles. They just pickle the whole cabbage, basically. They've got cauliflower, they've got jalapenos, they have okra, a little bit of everything. I'm gonna get kind of a grab bag of random pickles. Let's go for it. In Turkey, you'll find pickled veggies of all kinds. Then there's the pickled fruits and even just some straight up pickled juice. Some pickling I see going on in this establishment is downright reckless. I saw pine cone somewhere. You can't pickle a pine cone. You can't even eat a pine cone, can you? I wanna try this first. This is an unripe plum. That's interesting because it tastes like a little like sour apple. This is a pickled unripe melon. They begged me to slice it and I said no. So let's see how much I regret that. Huh? Probably slicing it would be a good idea. Very intense, different from a cucumber type pickle. I like it. I give this one a passing grade. Of course, if the pickles get to be too much, you can cleanse your palate with pickle juice. And I believe they've garnished it with a pickle. I heard they have a giant bottle in the back with a pickled body. Oh, that's not bad. The weirdest among us have finished all their pickles and thought, eh, I'll drink some pickle juice, right? Here, they have a cabbage bundle. It's like a pickled vegetable roll. Ugh. Wow, this would be so good if you sliced it up a little bit. They have like really finely minced cabbage and carrots and stuff in there. It tastes quite good. Here, finally, they pickled an entire eggplant. That's the weirdest one so far. Overall, I love the way they prepare it. I think the move here would be cut everything small, have it with something else, have it with beer or wine or your meal in between other heavy bites, in between heavy meat or cheese, and it sounds pretty good. I don't think anyone's meant to just eat it this way, unless you're just a complete animal. Our final location is cooking up kebabs on a massive scale. You may be familiar with the famous glittering Turkish donor kebabs, but this is also a kebab, and this is a kebab too. Firin kebab, 
Welcome to Cuban Gondela. This is a restaurant specializing in all things lamb meat. I've got the meat man right next to me right here. We're gonna do a quick meat tour. Furin kebab is made from giant chunks of lamb meat, slow cooked in their own animal oils for hours. Right there, we have a lamb shank. With one flick of the spoon, the meat just comes right off. So you can see how extremely soft and tender that meat is. Do you wanna try something too? Oh, just me? All right. It's so oily, so rich, juicy, and decadent. Incredibly soft, gentle lamb flavor. We are gonna order this, but we're gonna order a few different meat selections and then see how they prepare it. This looks like a lamb neck right here. We've got the shoulder. Oh, he has to stop after this. I could not possibly eat this in a week. This is so much meat. He just gives a thumbs up. He's like, yeah, take it. You came to the wrong place if you're not hungry. Next, the plate is covered with a thin layer of dough before heading straight to the oven. Time has passed, and this is complete. Next, this is what I call a long Turkish pizza. It takes a lot of skill to not tear this, to not put a hole into the dough itself. Next comes a big heaping mound of chopped lamb, tomato, green pepper, parsley, just a plethora of ingredients inside. He says to the baker, good luck. So he puts it to the very tippy tip of this giant wooden oar. This could be used to propel a ship. Right now, it's being used to cook pizza. Traditionally, it's just gonna be made with meat, but here you can see one that's just been made with delicious, gooey, bubbling cheese. All right, ours is about to come out in one moment. Boom, look at that thing. That is massive. Chef, thank you. Amazing. So we've just received our first course right here, about three feet of food. I like to measure my food in feet. It looks like we have some fried chilies, some lemon, that meat sauce on top, and then some cilantro too, I believe. They have chopped it up to make it much easier to eat. I should have kept it in one piece, but I forgot to let them know. It is super thin, and that meat has really just kind of been embedded into the dough. It's surprisingly soft in the middle and kind of crunchy on the edges. You can see how it's cooked underneath. Edges are a little bit more brown. They said you can do cheese or meat, but not both. I mean, they would do both for me, but traditionally, people would have one or the other. Let's go for it. Have doughy, have crackery, a hint of lamb flavor, tons of spices. I love how juicy it is. That's our warm up, that's our appetizer. I'm ready for that main course. Let's bring it down. The main course is here. My man Hussein, the owner of this whole operation, if you couldn't tell from all the pictures, uh, caricatures of him around the restaurant. This is not complete because he has a giant knife and I don't think he's mad at me. So I think he's gonna stab this. All right, epic reveal. He is cutting away the bread. Now, normally the guests would not have seen anything at this point. So this would be a complete surprise as to what's inside. For me, it's a second surprise. Oh, yes. I have a feeling he's gonna feed me. We've got some bread. He can put some meat in there. Uh, oh. oh my God. It's succulent and soft. It's so delicious. Like the oil is caking my lips right now. This is a uh, rhythmic. Yes, how about that? Oh my god, it's like barbacoa. Are there spices on here? No spices. No spices. Soft, but kurukya. They put some of the tail fat in there to help give it flavor, but really the meat has so much flavor already. It doesn't really need any help. It's just like uh, barbacoa that I had in Mexico and it is outstanding. He's making airplane sounds. This is like a meat masterpiece. One of the best lambs I've ever had in my life. I think I can feed myself from here on out if you'll allow me to. I've got some gloves right here of my own. You don't have to have gloves, but I also don't want my hands to smell like lamb because then I'm going to have stray dogs following me. The dogs here are huge and it's because they eat tourists. The neck is really one of my favorite parts. I just want to eat it as it is like this. Incredibly soft, you can see here. It's just so full of musculature and meat. It's been sitting here for a long time and it is still insanely hot. Put some neck meat on the cracker. It's stupid good. It is incredibly rich as you can imagine. I'm super impressed. This is one of the most interesting places I've ever been to, especially to eat lamb. Nobody does it like this place. Delicious lamb flavor, a little bit of salt, and a lot of care, love, and time given to each body part as they cook it. 10 out of 10, highly recommend. Boom. Guys, that is the end of the video. I want to say a huge thank you to Culinary Backstreets at culinarybackstreets.com for making this happen. They are a food tour company. They're doing food tours here in Istanbul and around the world. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have found all these awesome, interesting, and unique places here in this city. I always recommend doing a food tour. If you're short on time, if you want to get the most out of your time while you're traveling or on vacation, do a food tour and do it here with culinarybackstreets.com. That is it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. Welcome to the Best Ever Merch Store, where you can check out our brand new designs. Best Ever Bandanas in black, white, and red. The Please Send Nudes Hoodie. Pillow Soft Fabric with a quality custom graphic inlay.
Podcast and our Street Food Around the World graphic team. We're now shipping everywhere around the world. Just visit shopbesteverfood.com or click the link in the description below to get your new merch today. A peace.